For a lot of the average kids who are not going to be able to uh, get, a, get a pro career, are those schools making sure that they're actually getting a good education, that they're actually getting a degree, uh, that if they get injured, mm -hmm. their scholarships stick with them? Those are the kinds of things that I, I, I'd like to see the NCAA address. President Obama speaking to ESPN Tuesday. Colleges are raking in the cash this week from March Madness TV contracts and ticket sales, but players see none of it. That's why some are now calling for athletes to receive paychecks. But would that ruin the foundation of college sports? Our experts take on the simmering debate after ESPN's Tom Ferry. Behind the bracketology and excitement of March Madness is a multi-billion dollar industry all made possible by young athletes playing for their favorite schools. Everybody knew me in Oklahoma as the kid that committed early. Kyle Hardrick was so good that Oklahoma offered him a basketball scholarship in ninth grade. But after a knee injury during practice his freshman year, he lost his scholarship. And with medical bills piling up, he couldn't afford to stay in school. If it was workman's comp, my son would have been taken care of for the rest of his life. He would have been able to finish his college. Ramogi Huma, head of the National College Players Association, is fighting for the right of college athletes to unionize. I think it's um, very clear that the players who are 18 years old right now that are being taken advantage of in so many ways by this multi-billion dollar industry will be in a much better situation if they have a union. Huma joined former Northwestern quarterback Kane Coulter and took their case to the National Labor Relations Board, arguing the services athletes provide their schools should grant them protections as employees. The NCAA has not voluntarily moved on critical issues. We see unions that have been very effective. But NFL and NBA players are Professionals, people perceive college athletes to be something else, students and perhaps students first. Well, NCAA sports is professional. The players are paid to play. You know, they receive at Northwestern a scholarship that's worth over $60,000 per year. In return and on the condition that they play football, that's an employee-employer relationship. A new ABC News Washington Post poll showed an even split on allowing college athletes to create a union. But on paying athletes on top of their scholarships, Americans oppose that by a two-to-one margin. The NCAA argues, quote, the overwhelming majority of student athletes across all sports participate in college athletics to enhance their overall college experience and for love of the sport, as opposed to a desire to be paid to play college sports, unquote. But does that college experience focus more on sports than education? When players are spending 40, 50, 60 hours per week in their sport, they're not studying for psychology. It doesn't help you to play football in order to get your degree. Certainly there's a challenge with the amount of time that it takes for competition and travel and such, but uh, the primary goal is for them to get a degree, and we can't lose sight of that. So will paying college athletes change the game entirely? Part of the attractiveness of uh, intercollegiate athletics is knowing that these are amateurs. As long as the NCAA takes care of athletes, handles academic support systems, and uh, makes sure that athletes uh, get the right medical atten attention, they make out better than employees would. Uh, and they come out with a college education. But is that happening right now? No, it isn't happening right now. And <laughs> you're absolutely right. That, that doesn't mean that. Um, we should turn to paying athletes as opposed to reforming the NCAA. The question is, will it take athletes to bring about those reforms? For this week, Tom Ferry, ESPN, Bristol. Thanks, Tom. We have both sides of the debate here now. Christine Brennan, USA Today columnist and ABC News contributor, and Joe Nacera, columnist for The New York Times. And Joe, I want to start with you. You think this is a great idea to pay these athletes? I do. Uh, I think that in, in college football and in men's basketball, uh, the athletes are, in fact, employees in a multi-billion dollar business. So in effect, you have a multi-billion dollar business with a free labor force. Is that right? Now, uh, President Obama is right. All these other things need to be taken care of, too. And I'm not saying they should get a million dollars or two million dollars, but I am basically saying that given the fact that they're not student athletes, they're athlete students, they deserve some compensation. 
Any argument there, Christine? Yeah. Well, I the, think so. Even with is. the student athlete, athlete, student. You know, right? I, Joe, I, I, this is a, a, a multifaceted argument and conversation that's important for the nation to have. But when you think about paying athletes, you have to think first and foremost of Title IX. You know, Martha, this is uh, one of the most uh, well loved laws of the last half century in this country, of course, enabling women and girls to play sports just like so their if brothers. So they start paying the male athletes? If you pay the football players, According to my experts, you have to pay the field hockey players or you have lawsuits galore. Uh, and in fact, just three years ago, the NCAA tried to do this by paying football $2,000, as you know, That's a stipend. Right. And that was just roundly defeated. Joe, how, how do you counter that? Would that well, happen, I, you think? I, I, Seems to make football, sense. Football and men's basketball are a different category of sport than anything else. The athletes are there, first and foremost, not to get an education, many of them major in eligibility. They're there to generate billions of dollars in revenues for the university. That's their job. So I do think it's a different case. And you're right, there would be litigation. That's OK. Yeah, well, of course, as you know, only about 10% of the major college teams, even football teams, even make money. They, pay, they don't even pay for themselves. So the idea that they're generating the money to pay for field hockey or lacrosse or men's swimming isn't happening. Let, let's talk about injuries, though. And, 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 and a kid comes in, he's injured, you heard in, in the piece there, then they're out of the program. I then think they're out of the scholarship. Then what happens? Should, should some things change if, if they don't go as far as paying athletes as employees should things change? The answer, I, I think, is yes. I think yeah. intelligent people can come up with decisions on how, if someone's injured, a, a young man or woman, while playing sports, how they're covered after they, as they go on in life. And I also think the, the pocket change, the money to go in, to your grandmother's funeral, I think that's important to discuss as well. The NCAA has been a monolith for a very long time and has really been very unfeeling about a lot of these issues. And the main thing that needs to happen before pay, before anything else, is there needs to be a real organization that can, that can stand up for the players and push back on a lot of these rights issues. Pay notwithstanding, there are so many things that need to be done to just give the player a chance for the same rights as other students and, and, and the same deal as other students. I, just, just quickly to you both, I, I, I love college football. My son plays Division three. Doesn't it change the game fundamentally if you start paying those athletes? How do the fans respond? Americans don't seem to want this. No, I think people would uh, despise it. And I think it could ruin everything. And keep in mind, also, they're already getting college scholarships. The value of that can be up to a quarter million dollars, plus all the exposure, the coaching, uh, the fact they don't come out of college with student debt. There, there's a lot that athletes are being paid. Very, now. very quickly, Joe. People said that free agency would destroy uh, professional baseball. It did not. Putting money in the play, in the pockets of players would not destroy college ba basketball and football. I think you're going to disagree forever. Thanks very much for joining us.